Hello, kiddos. Move the camera a little bit further back, maybe right about there. I wanted to show a little trick I found by accident. Uh, I had a box of stuff that came with that Landis sewing machine. And uh, it had some strange looking needles I had never seen before. In it. And that's these bad cats right there. I hope you can get a picture. There it is. It's all focused up. It's just a long, skinny, thin wire twisted. It's got a loop in it. And I found it's real handy because when you're in these tight corners on these Cheyenne rolls right here, that needle is just way too long. And I've cut needles down trying to get that to work, and that didn't work. Then I thought, well, let's try this. This might work. So basically what you do is you come in and poke your hole. And then you just, you don't even have to lock this. You just put it in there like that. And then push it through. Make sure you're in the right hole. And then take it off and put it right there for now. Now... You take it and do just the same thing, but opposite. You put the loop side through. Hope it goes through the same hole, which yeah, it did. Now, you take your other thread and just stick it through there. It doesn't have to have but about an inch or two. And then you just uh, pull it through you can't see, but it made a little loop right there. And then there's that. And eventually when I get over to here, I can, I can go ahead and just put the needles on. It'll be a little bit less monkey motion, but for now, it's going to be like this. I like to put my finger down there so I can kind of aim for my finger and then I kind of pull it out of the way so I don't poke my finger. Ooh, trust me, that finger poking hurts. Hurts, hurts, hurts. Now, do I have a long enough spot here to get my needle in and out? No, maybe not. I'll use this fancy thing here a couple more times. Uh, just because it does make life easier. I'm trying to get this all, most of this sewn as I can while it's still wet because it just, that all goes in there so much easier. I believe you can find these uh, type of needles at a place you can get boot making supplies at. I want to say it's a welting needle, but I may be wrong. I'll take a picture of it when I'm done with the video and put it on the, on the thing there and you can maybe have better luck Googling what it's called. Now see what happened there? I didn't put my finger where I was wanting. Pay attention, David. Pay attention.
Anybody I know got an old barber chair? That, you know, that you can pump up and it'll raise and everything they want to get rid of? Donate? Trade? Let me know. Because I sure could use one. Make me a different drawdown stand, or maybe not a drawdown stand, but a stand that I can adjust the height and everything on. Uh, so I'm not having to uh -oh, do it like I am here, tying it off to the bench, workbench here like this. Oof. I believe the next couple of holes we can go ahead and put my needles on. But since I got a rhythm going, I'm going to keep doing this for now. Whoop, wrong one. <laughs> wrong one. Like I said, I believe, I may be wrong, I believe this is called a welt needle. Maybe some of my crack pot or, or cracker jack researchers on Facebook can Google it and find out what the real name is for us. Because I'm kind of occupied right about here like this. All right, I'm going to turn you loose. That's enough excitement for y'all today, huh? Got a long way to go, don't I? Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of the parts of saddle making I don't like, but it is, it is part of the job. All right, kids, davidmillsaddlery.com. Toodaloo, buggeroos.